G'day all, welcome to nine handy welding tips and tricks that'll save you money and time in the long run. However, we're not here to waste your time, so like a schooner at a local pub, let's get stuck into it. There's a lot of confusion about which gas to use for MIG or TIG, so today we're going to clear the air. TIG welding requires pure argon gas, which will provide a clean weld with no oxidisation. While MIG welding requires an argon, CO2 and oxygen mixture for more penetration and heat. Now we're going to show you what the right gas and the wrong gas can do to your welds. As you can see with our pure argon, we get a nice, clean, non-oxidised finish. With our argon mixture, our weld is just full of defects. Now with our MIG, our argon mixture gives us a nice, hot, penetrating weld, while our pure argon gives us a cold, non-penetrating weld. A common mistake beginners make when welding with a gas aspire is they push the torch instead of dragging it. Pushing the torch creates slag inclusions and weld defects. I'm going to give you an example of the right method and the wrong method now. So these are our two samples. This is the one where I push the torch, that's the one where I pull the torch. As you can see, it's full of slag inclusions and weld defects, whereas Dragon creates a more refined weld. We've been getting a lot of inquiries on how to do vertical ups, so today we're gonna to show you the right settings and the right technique. Today we're gonna to be working with eight mm steel. So as a general guide on most machines, going from down hand to vertical up, you're going to decrease your wire speed by three or four, and your volts by about five or six. Now I'm gonna explain the right technique while I'm welding. Starting at the base of our weld, we'll build the foundation by weaving back and forth, followed by triangular motion punching into the corner and pausing at the sides. Today we're going to talk about drive rollers and the differences between them. Starting off, V-groove rollers are used for solid wire. These are not knurled and since it's stiffer wire, it won't deform or slip as it's feeding through. Next, F-groove rollers are used for gasless wire. They're knurled and have teeth that dig into the wire so you don't have the tension down as hard, keeping the wire in its tubular shape without distorting it. Finally, U-groove rollers are designed for aluminium wire. Since aluminium wire is soft and easier to form, U-groove rollers keep the wire in its round form, feeding smoothly. I'm going to show you how to set your wire tension correctly. Firstly, start with a cold torch and feed about 50 millimetres of wire so that it is exposed at the end of the tip. Now decrease the tensioner so the wire slips when the trigger is pulled. Turn the tension to 360 degrees clockwise and grip the exposed wire between your thumb and forefinger with light pressure and pull the trigger again. If it's still slipping, repeat the process until the wire starts feeding smoothly. So your gasless MIG welding versus stick welding, what applications you use each process for? Starting off with the gasless MIG welding, this process is perfect for both thin and thicker sections and it's faster than stick welding as it is semi-automated. However, it has a more expensive setup cost and more variables that can potentially cause downtime if not set up correctly. Now with stick welding, this process has a relatively inexpensive setup cost and is less sensitive to harsh surfaces such as rust. It is, however, a slower process and is limited to thicker materials. I'm going to show you how to prepare your tungsten electrode. We will be using a gold-tipped 2.4mm lanthanated tungsten electrode for this demonstration, as it can be used for both ferrous and non-ferrous metals with the same preparation. Firstly, you will need either a bench grinder or a tungsten grinder. We'll be using a bench grinder because it's more common. Using the opposite end of the coloured tip, press the tungsten vertically on a 30 degree angle against the grinding wheel and rotate in a consistent motion until you achieve a fine point. The reason you grind with the grain, not against the grain, is because it will stay sharper for a longer duration of time and the arc will stay focused and more stable, resulting in a narrower and neater weld. We'll be showing you how to prepare your aluminium prior to TIG welding to get optimum results. It is essential that your workpiece, tungsten and filler rod are all clean to a high standard. The best way to achieve this is by using a clean wire brush to remove any surface contaminants on your material as well as wiping down your workpiece and fill rod with acetone, making sure to use a clean cloth. It is also recommended to keep a clean tungsten. The easiest way to do this is to use a bench grinder or linear shaft to grind the tungsten back to its original state or replace it altogether if it's too damaged. We're going to be talking about regulator safety. Firstly, we need to make sure that we're using the correct regulator for the gas we're using. This is important because regulator construction varies depending on the gas it's intended for. Regulators for non-combustible gases have a right-hand thread, whereas combustible gas regulators have a left-hand thread, marked with a notch on the nut. Once the regulator is attached to the bottle, remember to loosen the valve before turning on the gas so the diaphragm isn't subjected to sudden pressure. Thanks for watching the video. If you like what you saw, don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell to never miss another one. See you all soon.